I'm showing you receipts of how much I really spent for the month of March. Not just a week into my life, but a whole month. As a 25 year old, living alone, in quarantine, with a lot of temptations online especially. So, my total expenses this month resulted to... What's up guys? It's Nick. Welcome back to my channel where I empower you to take on adulting like a boss. I know I've talked a lot about savings and money mistakes in your 20s, but I feel like it's totally different when you apply it in real life situations. Which is why I wanted to be real and honest with you how much I really spent for a whole month. Did I stay within my budget? Did I splurge too much? Full disclosure, I actually did not plan to make this video prior to March rolling out. So all of the expenses I'm gonna share with you are completely real, raw, and was not planned whatsoever. So if you're into budgeting, then make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, because we're gonna talk about how you can save money and just live your best life. So let's get into it. I'm kinda nervous, okay? So by the way, if I'm looking down over here, it's because I have my laptop where I have my reference for all the expenses that I have and I want to be as accurate as possible for you guys. So ideally, your living expenses, both your needs and your wants should comprise like 50 to 70% of your actual net income and the rest of it will be used for your savings and investments. So that's kind of my basis if I went over the budget or if I stayed within the budget. So we shall find out. I wanted to start off light, so I do have my monthly subscriptions that automatically get charged to my credit card. So first thing on that list is Spotify. So I do pay 169 pesos for premium because I just really hate the commercials that get interrupted while I'm in the zone because I need my music, I need my podcast. Next is my Netflix, which I pay 275 pesos for because if you watch my previous video where I talked about this Netflix hack, wherein if you avail of the family package where it's basically like four users in one package, you really save a lot more rather than if you pay for the individual so what I do is that I divide the Netflix family package cost between my parents and my boyfriend and myself so we all live in different homes so it makes sense for us to have at least one device per user next is my cloud subscription which is P cloud which I pay 245 pesos for this kind of acts like your iCloud but this one covers all of my files. It's easy for me to access my files through my phone, on my laptop, and I don't ever have to worry about having like 10,000 hard drives just to save all of my pictures, all of my files. And then the next thing is kind of not considered like a living expense, but it's actually my insurance. So my insurance for Pru Life is 3,416 pesos. And this is kind of just an ongoing thing I've been doing. The great thing about me having it in here is that it automatically gets credited to my credit card. So based on that, the monthly subscriptions, I would consider all of that together. It's now at 4,105 pesos and we're not even halfway you guys. Next is let's talk about the fixed expenses. These are needs um, in order for me to live on my own. First off, I pay for the association juice for the condo which is 3,407 pesos so that you can't go without because if you live in a condo you do have to pay for those kinds of admin expenses in order for the building to operate on its own so next is utilities this month kind of was high because i paid for um two months worth of electricity which is 2415 pesos so the reason why i paid two months worth is because sometimes there could be either delays from the admin sending me the correct bill so i usually like wait for them to make sure that it's completely right before i give the payment so once they have like that correct billing statement i was able to pay off two months worth of electricity bill and honestly this is quite expensive versus when i wasn't working from home obviously like i am eating breathing working in the condo by the way this is me already not opening the aircon every day so i'm already like 
super matipid level na to guys. And then the next two things are kind of an estimate. So I'm talking about my laundry service and the water refill station. So for laundry, it's around 200 a week and it also actually depends if I put my comforter in there or my rugs because the price would spike up. And for my water refill, so like the, the gallons of water that I have. And then next is the bigger chunks of my living expenses. It would be my phone plan and my home Wi-Fi plan. So for my phone plan, I actually didn't pay anything for the month of March because I transitioned to a new phone plan. So I availed of a new phone. But for my Globe Wi-Fi, plan it's actually around 1899 pesos so let me tell you what happened um so this is kind of how i budget things whenever i do an upgrade or like when i revisit my expenses so as i mentioned i changed to a new phone plan because i got a new phone from it so my phone plan used to be 1399 it's gonna be 1799 um so i said that means that I need to reduce my home Wi-Fi plan. So it used to be 1899, but I downgraded to 1299 instead for like 10, 15 Mbps, I believe. When I did the computation of downgrading my home Wi-Fi plan, but upgrading my phone plan, I realized that I was still able to save 200 pesos instead of me adding up to my living expenses. So this is an example of, you know, if you take a look at your overall monthly expenses, you can really see like where you can reduce, where you can increase a bit based on your needs, based on your lifestyle. So imagine I was able to upgrade to a new phone, downgraded my home Wi-Fi plan, which wasn't that of a big deal, and I was still able to save 200 pesos on a month-to-month -month basis. So in total, my fixed expenses for the month of March resulted to 8,900 pesos. Now next, this is the fun part, which is the miscellaneous. Okay, so these are needs. These are like nice add-ons, besides like the groceries part that I'm gonna talk about because I need food, right? First off is groceries. I ended up spending 2,451 pesos. And I'm actually surprised that it was this low because usually I spend like at least a thousand a week but i realized it's because i compensated with my food pan expenses um so i realized that for my food pan expenses or and i realized that this amount is actually like a hundred percent more versus my february food panda expenses what the hell happened I think it's also because this was a month where there was a lot of stuff going on and I just couldn't think about cooking a lot. So I just ended up like, I just wanna eat and not think about preparing what I need to eat and things like that. So let's move on, okay? Don't judge me for my food pan expense. Next is for my business. Been working on this business that you're gonna find out soon. I'm so excited to share. But I spent 2,086 pesos. And this is also what I mentioned that you know, if you stop spending on like those impulse buys, you are able to put that money aside to something that's more of value, like, you know, a hobby or a business. And um, next is for, <laughs> this is a really random one, but I bought a lot of eyebrow pencils because my sister living abroad said like, can you just buy me a lot of this eyebrow pencil that she really loves that's only in the Philippines. So I bought her that. Plus I had to refill mine because obviously I cannot live without my brows. Next is for like skincare related. So I bought cleansing oils, which I promised myself only if I run out, that's when I'm gonna buy a new like skincare product. Next is transportation. So basically this goes to my grab car expenses when I would go to work or go home from work. And then next other random things. So I bought Tupperware <laughs> because all of my Tupperwares are just gone for some reason. So I just bought one and it was on sale. I also bought a book. So it's all about like unlocking the stress cycle. So I just wanted to read on my free time and not always be on my phone or like be on Netflix. And then lastly is what I'm sitting on right now. So I ended up buying myself a chair at home that is super comfy for a change because I really work from home all the time now, especially you in lockdown. It's good to invest on a good chair to take care of my back, to take care of my butt. So the total amount is 4,495 pesos but what I paid here is like half of the amount because I used the other amount for a different card which I will be paying later this month. So I feel like this is just one of the investments that I talked to you guys about that even though it's a higher priced item but I know in the long term it's gonna benefit me then I'm willing to invest on it. Speaking of investments, I have another one here 
here which is kind of a beauty treatment and that is my monthly underarm laser treatment because for the females out there you know how hassle it is to do like wax and shaving and all that so i actually just invested in like laser hair removal and it's really one of the best beauty treatments that you can invest on so this month of march it's actually my sixth installment so all of those miscellaneous expenses it resulted to a total of 19,653 pesos now we're not done there's another one i actually don't call it an expense but more of an another investment so i do put in my money to call financial for index funds and i deposited six thousand pesos for the month of march it's kind of my retirement fund in a way so i just regularly put aside money for that so if you're keeping track of the running total then you know that my total monthly expense for the month of March resulted to 38,658 pesos. So the question is, did I stay within my budget? I can't tell you the exact percentage that I consumed out of my income, obviously. But if you remember, I mentioned earlier, the ideal scenario is that your wants and your needs consume 50 to 70 percent of your monthly income and then the rest will be for savings and investments but what i can tell you is that the 36k that i spent is within the budget range and also gave my savings more room to grow which i'm very very proud of you just take a better look at your monthly budget your monthly expenses so that you can make sure that you can set a target for yourself and to make sure that you are not going beyond your budget and you still have something left for your savings and future investments so that is why i've been sharing my monthly expense tracker so basically how i was able to share with you all my expenses it's because i do have a monthly expense tracker so i can also gauge like previous month to the next month how did i go did i spend more this month was i able to save more this month it's because of the monthly expense tracker that you can download in the link below and it also allows me to pay all my bills easily which is why you should check out this video when i talk about all my tips on how i pay all my bills online and on time yeah because we need to do that okay so i will see you there